Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about my average wedding day. I'm going to walk you through it, and then then you can go along your day. Step one: show up to wedding, wear nice clothes, nice ish clothes. John Branch, he wears a suit to every wedding or most weddings. He has a nice suit. It's breathable, flexible. I don't wear a suit. I wear a dress shirt, dress pants, and dress shoes. That's my average wedding day outfit. Aren't you glad you clicked on this? It's great so far, right? Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is also a video podcast. You can subscribe on YouTube also to the second sneaky channel. So I arrived at the wedding day and I would say most of my weddings. Um, so maybe to break down my business, uh, I think I talked about this last week, but to break down my business a little bit, what I do is I will work at the same venues locally here. I think I said five venues, but I feel like it's a little bit more than that. It was like eight or nine venues uh, that I'll work at and I work at them over and over and over again. And that might sound like a nightmare to you, but it sounds nice to me. I can up my efficiency and get people better images faster and any lighting conditions. And I know, I don't know, stress, stress wise, I feel like I'm at a zero whenever I go into those places. And a reason that I've chosen those venues as the, the places that I work is because I know that mostly everything happens there. So every now and then I'll have a church wedding. But most of the time, the getting ready happens there or nearby. The ceremony happens at the venue. The reception happens at the venue. And they actually stay on time. So one thing that I noticed in my early career was when you're doing banquet hall weddings, how over they go in terms of like dinner. They're just serving dinner. It's like, why is it 1230 at night and you guys are just putting out desserts? This is crazy. But that was the thing that I dealt with. And it sucks when the couple has you and you're like, yeah, by 10, 10 o'clock, you won't need me. Um, also, I, I live in Canada where weddings go until like two in the morning. Um, I know my buddy Magic in Poland, um, his weddings go to like four or 5 a.m. So that's like his average wedding day, which is crazy. And then I know uh, my friend Sam Hurd. I went to a wedding with him in Orlando. There's actually a full behind the scenes video up on YouTube about it. And the wedding was done at 11 or 10. It was like very strange. And I guess that's the way that US weddings go. A lot of them just 10 or 11, you're done. You go to the after party. And he was like, yeah, I do full day coverage. I'm there to the very end. I'm like, you're there till like two in the morning, every single wedding. Like that sounds like a nightmare. Then it turns out that he's just done at 11. And that's, that's honestly, it sounds really nice. So everything happens at one location for me. And I like that a lot. So most of my packages, I'm going to say eight to 10 hours is like an average day. I would say eight hours, pretty much everything fits in. Sometimes if it's a, if there's a tea ceremony or something, um, maybe that makes it a 10 hour day. I would say that it is incredibly rare. I can't even remember the last 12 hour day that I did. I think I have one coming up um, this year, but I can't remember the last 12 hour day I did. And I am very, very happy. That's a very intentional choice that I made that I do not enjoy doing that. I don't want to go to 15 different locations and a photo shoot location and three in the afternoon and terrible light. I just want to go to one spot. I'd like to show up at two, do some getting ready photos, 4.30, 5 p.m. ceremony, into dinner, do some first dances, do a few minutes on the dance floor, head home. So I arrived to that location, the first location, and I am usually on maybe a 50 millimeter lens, maybe an 85, maybe a 35 on a prime, I'm trying to keep it small, not be too intimidating when I arrive into the getting ready room. If it is, um, if there's, I guess there's, different varieties of this. I would say most of the time, if it's a male, female wedding, the guys are getting ready somewhere that's not so pretty and the girls are getting ready somewhere somewhat beautiful usually, or at least a room that has space and good lighting. And I will typically spend maybe, depending on how it works out with the schedule, maybe 10, 15 minutes with the guys. I don't need that much time with them. It's usually just kind of do the tie, get a few shots, head out. Sometimes if there's family there, I'll do a few family photos as well. And then I head to the girls. Um, the other, I guess the struggle is that if you're working alone, that you kind of have to make the guys get ready a little bit earlier than they probably should. Um, or you can do it the other way if, if they're getting ready at the same spot that you can kind of bounce around. But if you're getting ready at different locations, um, sometimes that's a necessary thing that you have to do. Um, if you have a second photographer, just, they just go to the second location. It's easy. When I arrive into a getting ready space, I usually don't pull my camera up right away and just like enter the room with like a direct flash and just start making making a ruckus. I like to be kind of chill. I feel like mirrorless cameras these days have made me even more chill. The fact that I don't have to look through a viewfinder anymore. Um, I shoot 99% of my day, maybe even I'm going to call it 100% of my day 
on the screen, which is wild. The LCD screen, I don't look through the EVF anymore. My camera, I still prefer to have an EVF, but I feel like I wouldn't need one. That if Sony was like, here's this wicked new A93 or 4 or whatever the rumor sites are saying now, um, I have no intel on that camera, unfortunately, because it's the one that I do want. But if they came out with it and they were like, it doesn't have an EVF, just a screen only, I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. I'll buy it. No problem. So in the early stages of getting ready, it's very, very easy and nice now to just kind of like point your camera in the, I don't know, you don't got to be looking at people. You can just kind of be creeping around looking at your screen. It's very, very easy to stay candid. So I do that for a little bit. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll walk into the room and I'll ask for details that usually you walk in and people are like, what do we do now? And I'm like, ah, don't everyone look at me all at once. This is, this is too much. And I'll ask for like, oh, I'll like go do some photos of the dress. I've noticed that less and less of my couples actually want a photo of the dress these days, um, that it's now becoming more common for them to, uh, I kind of phrase it in a question like, do you want a photo of the dress hanging? And most of my couples are now like, no, that's weird. That's dumb. I don't want that. And that's awesome. I like that. I, I've never liked that shot anyways. And it's like such a weird way to open up a gallery, a, a dress, just kind of like hanging. Some of them hang well. Some of them hang terribly. Some of them are just impossible, but it is a nice thing to do. That's not just immediately taking pictures of people upon being the new person in the room. Um, I will do photos of invitations, um, any details, and that's usually my warm up. I do that in the same room. I won't just like run off somewhere and, and go do it by myself. I do it kind of in the room. And usually what this means is that people can warm up a little bit to the fact that there's this photographer man now here with us. And also because when you are doing those photos, they tend to find more stuff. They're like, oh, I've totally forgot to give you the wedding rings or whatever it might be. So by doing that kind of within view of them, um, usually it makes a faster final product rather than photographing a bunch of stuff and then realizing that there were like three more elements that had to be included because it's like the grandmother's watch or whatever that they're wearing. So that's my suggestion for arrival and just kind of being, I don't know, accepted. <laughs> into the, like you're kind of a weird bonus member of the wedding party for the day. And the faster you can get up to the fact that they're just like normal with you, um, I think that that's my entire goal, especially with my couples, is to get them to be normal as fast as possible. And by doing something like that, you just kind of speed that process up. And when you are a friend, when you're that wedding party member, all of a sudden for the rest of the day, they make your life a heck of a lot easier. They're not second guessing you or um, trying to undermine you. If you came in too hot and trying to micromanage you and like do weird things, they're just like, this person seems to know what they're doing. They seem fun. They're nice. Can I have a picture with my significant other, please? And those first few minutes, I would say, are pretty important for that. So I do all the getting ready photos. I would say that usually takes me maybe about an hour total. And after that, I will typically move to the ceremony and I'll start doing candid. So the Tamron 35 to 150 is now on my camera and I'm doing a lot of candids of guests just arriving, just hanging out, having a fun time. If you're a little bit more outgoing, maybe you can ask some people if they look like their family, their friends or whatever, you can do some group shots. Tim will walk around and be like, hey, get together for a photo. And he's really good at it. I, I start to sweat when I even consider thinking about doing that. So I just circle around, I grab some candids and just document the people as they're coming in. Um, I also make a very good effort to photograph anything that has been brought in by the couple. Um, or anything that they've clearly had like a some sort of input in. Most things are pretty obvious, but every now and then you get something that you just didn't document that somebody spent way too much time on creating. They wanted a photo of it, and it's a bit of a letdown to be like, I just don't have that photo. I'm sorry. So make conscious effort. Walk around. Anything that looks like it should be photographed, just grab a photo of it. Uh, same goes for reception as well, but we'll talk about that in a minute. During the ceremony, Tamron 35 to 150, and I typically park myself up at the front of the aisle, with a view, if it is male, female wedding, um, with a view, usually the, the groom will be standing there watching bride and dad or sister or whoever uh, come down the aisle. And I will typically be across the aisle from them so I can get the reaction shot. I also shoot a lot of this time period vertically as well um, to help out with framing because I've noticed that whenever I go horizontal and I include everyone, then I'm always getting a weird face or somebody's got like an iPad with like a big red case or something that's just not the most ideal. So vertical and kind of isolating and also fire alarms and stuff that's always kind of like in the background. Um, if you're vertical, you can kind of isolate a little bit better. And I found that overall, I like the images um, 
better. And also all social media is all vertical now. So maybe it's a more useful image to shoot vertically um, more often. I will stay up at the front of the ceremony uh, until everybody gets up there. And at this point, usually I will sneak down the aisle and I will get a wide shot of everyone standing. So everyone's usually standing before anyone tells them to sit down. Uh, I like to get that shot of the couple at the front in the center and then everybody standing. It looks more of a fun, immersive environment than it would if everyone was just sitting. After I get this shot, um, also there's a bunch of uh, YouTube videos up as well that kind of show this entire process and on-camera video. Um, what I'll usually do is I'll go to either the left or right side and I'll do my best to start getting photos and reaction shots of the couple. Usually the first couple minutes, they're maybe seeing each other for the first time that day. And there's probably some excitement there. The Whoever's officiating probably has some opening jokes and you'll get some good reactions very, very quickly. Um, I will typically at this point be on all the way at 150 millimeters and also in APS-C crop mode so that I'm actually at 225 and getting some nice tight close-ups. And once I have kind of a happy close-up, uh, maybe a more serious close-up and maybe like a small sadness photo. I don't know. Is that what that's called? Like a tear? I don't, I don't usually get a whole lot of tears during the ceremony, I don't think. Um, but once I have a couple photos, uh, I will usually cycle over to the other person's side. So I'll walk all the way around the back. I'm not going to cut in front of them down the aisle. Um, I'll go all the way out the back and then kind of all the way around. And I'll do the same for the other side. I also make sure that I get photos of all the, the people standing at the front, typically of the family or whoever is kind of in that front row. That is usually my go-to shot list within that time period. And um, I don't know, I've never, I don't think I've ever had any requests to be like, hey, can you find me a photo of like Steve's best friend's brother during the ceremony? Everybody's just kind of happy with, they know it's documentary style and they're just kind of happy with whatever it is typically. For rings, for anything that I have to get a little bit closer for, I will go kind of center of the aisle and zoom in. Usually I'll be at kind of the, the limit of my zoom um, as well during this time because I don't want to get too close. I want to get close so I can get the shot, but I don't want to just like be right up in their faces and shoot with 35. Um, so I'm usually at 150 or 225 or whatever it is to stay a little bit out of the way or at least out of the way of the family. If I'm behind the family row, I'm usually pretty happy. Uh, if I can be behind all of everybody and you still get the shot, I'm the most happy. And now for the couple coming back down the aisle, I'll usually now stay on that 35 to 150. But in the past, I've done a number of different things. I don't think that there's an official way that I always photograph this. I found that a 7200 would always get you the shot. But I also really enjoy getting this uh, couple walking back down the aisle with a really wide angle lens. So if I'm the only one there or if no one's shooting video, I'll get a little bit closer during this time. I feel like there's enough emotion that I'm comfortable getting a little bit closer because a shot at 35 at 1.4 looks really, really darn nice. And I personally enjoy that image more than the 70 to 200 image. Um, I feel like you're just, you feel like you're more part of the scene, and the energy and the motions there. Um, they also have a little bit more of a understanding that you're there. So they'll maybe look at the camera a little bit or they'll decide that they want to kiss or do something a little bit nicer maybe for the camera. Whereas when you're at the far back of the aisle, they don't see you. you they're usually just looking at people and like shaking hands. And sometimes it can look a little little bit of a mess. So uh, yeah. Uh, another thing Lindsay always gets a couple to do is when, when they get down to the end of the aisle is actually just like stop there and, and kiss. And that's, I would say, one of the, the best photos I think from every wedding. So that is something that you want to prompt. Um, you can tell your couples in the first meeting or you can just tell them, on the wedding day, or you can just stop them. Like you can just talk to them and be like, Hey, do you want to kiss? Or you can just like kind of point at each other. And usually they get the idea. Piece that I missed out on prior to the ceremony is that sometimes I'll do a first look probably 50% of the time. Now I'll do a first look and it's pretty simple. Sometimes we'll do all the family photos at that time. Sometimes we'll do a few of the family photos. Sometimes we'll do all the wedding party photos. Sometimes we'll just do the couple and that's it. There's no official right or wrong way to do it. My, uh, one, a couple, they haven't probably been married before. They're like, do we do a first look? And I kind of lay it out as if they want to be part of cocktail hour and enjoy a little bit more of their time there, then a first look would be nice. And if they don't care so much about that and they just want to go and do photos during the cocktail hour, then there's no reason to do a first look. If there's any sort of anxious energy or they just want to do it to calm their nerves, I'm happy to say that that's probably the correct decision for them. But they probably know that. They're just looking for a little confirmation from you. So moving into the family photos, I will ask my couples for a list of family photos if they have a big family um, or if they think that they just figured out in five minutes that we don't worry about it. But if they do have a larger family, I will ask them to kind of put everything down 
on paper so that I know uh, exactly kind of how many family photos I'm going to be doing. And also this kind of thwarts the efforts of maybe uh, an aunt or somebody coming in and being like, oh, we should do this photo that's and taking over your shoot. You can be like, we're doing everything on the paper first. We'll do bonus ones over, over cocktail hour or during the reception. And by having this list, you speed things up a lot. I say to give a copy to me, and then I also ask for somebody that knows who most people are. Um, that way, they're not just yelling names, that they can actually spot people and maybe go collect them and, and bring them in um, when they're on deck for the next photo. I found it to be extremely helpful. If you have a second photographer that's fine with doing this, maybe that's fine too. Um, sometimes a wedding planner also step into this role to help out. From there, we move into the couple's photos as well as wedding party. I would say if I have a half an hour for kind of all of this, I can be happy. Um, as long as the, the family photos don't take more than maybe 10 minutes. Um, if I have family for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, um, you can usually get a lot done in that time. And then the couple, maybe 10, 15 minutes with them. And then wedding party, 10, 15 minutes as well. Um, I cycle through, there's a shot list for members um, over on the members website. And I kind of cycle through uh, in a way that I'll do an individual with a bride or a groom and each of the members on their side, as well as maybe uh, if there's like any groups from university or whatever, I'll do some smaller groups like that. Then we'll do a few wide shots, um, some smiling, some more serious, and then be done with the wedding party pretty quickly. Uh, it's something that I've definitely noticed over the past couple of years that it began. <laughs> I'm going to say I used to have like two and a half hours of these photos and that was normal. And now I have a half an hour and I'm way happier. There are only so many things you can do with the wedding party and a lot of them get really cheesy and weird. So I just kind of do the basics, make sure everybody's having a nice time and try to do one fun one before somebody yells out, hey, let's do some fun ones. And then they all look at you like, tell us how to be fun. And then I usually pose it to the couple as, hey, like I'm happy if you guys want more photos at the wedding party, happy to do it. But otherwise, like we can probably send them to cocktail hour. And you become everyone in the wedding party's best friend when you give them a very quick and efficient photo shoot that gets them everything they want, but doesn't keep them there for like two and a half hours. The couple's photos, I will usually do a shoot at that time and then I'll bring them out over, uh, hopefully if we get a sunset or even in the evening time, a blue hour shoot. Um, so usually I'll do kind of everything that I need knowing that I'm probably going to come out in better lighting. So I don't overshoot that section. I get them back to the wedding. Um, I'll also, I guess, depending on weather, but I do what I can to get them back to their wedding day. I don't want the entire day to be a production, a photo shoot. So if they can get back to that and then maybe after a glass of wine or two, we go out for another shoot. Um, usually that second 10 minute shoot is kind of where I get all of the, at least my favorite images of the day of the two of them. Moving into the reception, I will typically be on an 85 millimeter lens at this point, or maybe a 51.2. And that's kind of what I'm happiest with. Um, I can probably get away with the, the 35 to 150, but even at 2.8, um, unless you're lighting the scene, I guess maybe I'll talk about um, my changes since going mirrorless a couple years ago. I used to pretty much light every scene. Even if quality of light was decent, I would still bring in an off-camera flash to, to help out a little bit. With mirrorless and high ISO capabilities, if the quality of light is good, I will usually just shoot with it before setting up any sort of off-camera flash or using on-camera flash. And I've discovered, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one in 10 weddings, I bring out a flash at this point. And that might sound pretty crazy to you. And this is for the speeches and the intros and, and all of that. Once it gets into dancing, usually at that point, you, you might have to bring in a, a bit of a light or um, if you have a video team there, maybe they're going to light the scene anyways and it's going to be nice. It's happened a few times the past year. I'm like, wow. This is so nice. I'm just shooting in a studio and then they turn off the lights and everything is just pure dark and I have to go home. Usually after first dances, so I'll stick around. I, I taught my couples about 10 songs into dancing. So I do first dances and I'll stick around for a little bit. And once I'm happy and I feel like it's, it's always the same 20 people on the dance floor usually for the first little bit. Once I feel like I've captured all of them, I go and I say goodbye to the couple. Um, I'll also, I guess, tag team this with other vendors. So if there's a wedding planner, I'll usually, they're usually out kind of at the same time. So I'll just go and say a group goodbye from everyone um, so that they're not just like trying to enjoy their party. And every five minutes, someone's like, bye, we're leaving, which is maybe a little bit more of an enjoyable way to leave a wedding. Also, uh, I, this was kind of out of scope of this video, but uh, I do 50% when the couple books the wedding date in terms of money. So I get 50% up front and then 50% two weeks before the wedding date, because I absolutely hate the idea of the last point of contact with the wedding being, uh, can I have a check now, please? And then they have to go find it from the bridal suite or they have to like rip open some envelopes or something. Um, I would rather that not happen. And that's why I take payments up front. Um, it's not the way that I want to leave a wedding. It's not the last, last 
visual that they have of me. So if I can, if one, if you take one thing from this video, I, I hope that you maybe, maybe take that. Uh, and then when I get home, I back everything up. I will do another podcast on my backup structure. I think I've already made a video um, on the main channel about it. But if you want to check that out, you can. Um, and basically, I get home. I put everything on two drives. One is a working drive. One is a backup drive. I back all of my JPEGs up. Um, if you, I guess... I could do all my raw files now, but for years I've been backing up. I shoot raw and JPEG in my camera and I'll back up all the JPEGs so that within like two hours of the wedding, I have an offsite backup of everything. I also do my best to shoot my JPEGs exactly as I would almost want to deliver them and just add a little bit of a preset or let to them and they'd be fine to deliver. Um, so I back that up and then I start calling usually the night of the wedding. Um, this is something that I stole directly from Susan Stripling. She mentioned it and I was like, damn, that sounds smart. So the night of the wedding, assuming I'm not just completely beat, um, maybe the morning after the wedding if I don't get to it, but I would say eight hour wedding day, if I did photography only, I can sit down, I can call that entire wedding the night of the wedding in about half an hour or less. Whereas if I wait two weeks, it'll probably take me maybe an hour. Um, I will sometimes run everything through after shoot, but I feel like it's so fresh that I'm almost just as fast to go through and just select the images that I know that I need. Um, maybe another helpful thing is that if you're interested in flipping your workflow a little bit is that you can call in reverse. So rather than going chronologically through the day, you flip it and you go backwards because usually the last image you took from that set is going to be the one. So you're going to select the image and then you're going to go back through the entire shoot and how you worked your way to get that final photo. And it might be faster. It might not be faster. I don't know. It's a different thing to do. If you're bored of calling, maybe just flip it. Maybe it, maybe it makes it fun again. I don't know. All right. It's dark here now. I got to go. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, come on over to the YouTube video and put them in the comments below and I will get to them in a future podcast episode when we talk about Q and A's. Also book more weddings 2023 20, is out now. So go on over and get it. And if you're a member, you already have it. And I hope that you've been implementing some of the strategies. There's a lot in there. And if you get it before January 20th, 2023, it comes with a ton of bonuses. So get in before then. You also get a discount on it as well. So there's a link in the description for that. That's all for today. See you again another time.